I go back to the line of scrimmage because people love to watch the wide receivers and the running backs and the quarterbacks, and I do too. But I don't think we give nearly enough credit to what's going on at the line of scrimmage because that impacts it all. And I just wanted to make sure that I was seeing the same thing that you were. And I had the same thought that I'm expecting a great battle. And I was intrigued by the Miami defensive line against the Clemson offensive line because they lost the four starters, but they did have guys that are now starters that had reps. We're not talking about just guys that just stepped on campus. They had reps in the system. They had reps in you know, games throughout the season. So they had experienced guys and they've got one of the best left tackles in college football in Jackson Garmin against the Miami defensive line that has the two stud ends and is very strong in the interior. So I was fascinated to see how that was going to play out. And similar to what you just laid out, I thought that there were sporadic plays. You know, you saw the sporadic flash from a Jalen Phillips. Uh, In particular, he comes to mind, but by others up front. But I thought that that was one 75 to 80% of the time, if not more by the Clemson offensive line that they, that Trevor Lawrence, it wasn't like he had all day, all day, like sit back there and crochet, but he dropped back and he got to go through his progressions, do, 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 do. And then like, that was most of the, of his dropbacks. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the mismatch in the game I anticipated would have been the Miami offensive line against the Clemson defensive line. And that, that played out. Cam Harris ran eight times for three yards. Um, the thing that I would love to see the coaches film on is the wide receiver separation on, or lack thereof on the Miami side. Cause I heard about it and I, I could tell, you know, from what you can see on TV, that was the sense I was getting that there was no separation. No separation is an understatement. Um, you know, when, when you watch film as much, they, they give sometimes where they give that one-on-one view. Uh, and it was like, especially when we went down the field for a lot of those deep throws, those 50-50 throws and a couple of interceptions came out or PIs when they were trying to give us a chance to stay in the game. And it was just like, they were right there. You know, even when we tried to fight back through the ball, it showed that we have a lot to work on in the weight room when it comes to our wide receivers because – their corners, their builds, it was it was nothing we could do to fight back to the football, you know, because they're, they're trying to, like, work moves and move and shift, and they couldn't go anywhere. They couldn't move. Against press coverage, they couldn't even get off the line of scrimmage sometimes. So it threw off all of our timing. And, uh, like I said, I'm a big dude, so I never played out there, never played corner, never played safety, you know, I never played wide receiver. And I, I give a lot of those people – respect for being able to do what they do and track a football at top speed and be able to jump and run and one hand catch that stuff looks cool but man i tell you what if i'm working my behind off in the fronts and we give you a chance you better catch that freaking football because i'm out here fighting and going to war so that you could be fancy and score touchdowns and you can't even catch the football we can't run simple routes basic routes you know, we, we get a simple slant to try to get a drive going, drop. You know, we try to do a little quick wide receiver screen. Dude doesn't even attack the football. He just keeps on jogging, and then he's looking at the quarterback like, oh, well, what happened? You know, all the little things, we just looked bad. Bad, bad. And it was on a national stage, so it made it look even worse. And you asked about the time in the game in which I knew the way this thing was turning. And it wasn't the type game where there's a there's a fumble on a kickoff, so they only have 20 yards, and boom, they hit the first pass for a touchdown. Then there's a pick six, and it's 21 nothing before you can turn around. It didn't happen like that. Right. But it didn't take. Yeah, I didn't I didn't want to take too much away from so Miami. Yeah, I just didn't want to take too much away from like one drive per team, but even after just one drive on offense from each team it being Clemson and Miami and already having a perception of where they stood going into the game, I pretty much thought, you know, Clemson's going to win this game by two or three touchdowns, at least. I I, I just thought it was pretty obvious by, again, the line play and the lack of separation and just the way it was going. And 
the play that Bubba Bolden made on no, I'm sorry, the the uh, the the blocked kick right before halftime on the 61 yarder. I can't think of who blocked it. The kid with the hyphenated name. Oh, uh, Harrison Hunt. Yes, Harrison Maybe Hunt. Yeah. I wanted to say Hunt and yeah, Harrison Hunt. Uh, and then DJ Ivy picked it up, right? Yeah, DJ Ivy scored. Like if that would have been, if there would have been a reversed first half and Miami would have played lights out, been up 21-3, then Clemson got the block. I would have been like, uh-oh, they they might be waking up and this second half might be a completely different deal. Like you woke them up, you completely dominated. Like the yardage at halftime was, was like 310 to 75 or something like that. <clears throat> but I didn't feel that way. I just thought, uh, Clemson gave them one and it's 21 10. Now, on the scoreboard, that's a game. If you're down 21 10 at half, that's not good. You don't want to be down by 11, but it's a game. You got plenty of time. Uh, but I didn't feel that way. I just thought that was a blip on the radar and it was going to go back to exactly what it was because I just had confidence in Clemson. They've been through this before. They play in big games all the time. They, they didn't like that that happened, but I was thinking that's, that's not going to phase them. Wow. Okay. And see, like, that's why I asked, because for me, that made me confident that we can wake it up, especially because we had the ball coming out of halftime. Yeah. And what do we do with the ball, Mark? Dive, dive, QB draw, three and out. So we go into halftime and we talk about what we're seeing on the field. And that's what you come out and do. I mean, I, I was the main one, had everything in the world to say about Coach Rick Lashley and how confident I was about him. Uh, and he just, he and his side of the ball did not show up. Uh, I don't know who said anything about playoffs. That might have been somebody in the comment section, but um, nah. <laughs> no, no, nah, we're, we're nowhere near that right now. That's okay. That's okay. I, I think. This lets us know who and where we are, and it's all we can do from this point forward is grow from it. That's how I look at it. There have been teams that have made the playoffs that looked really bad against in one particular game. <clears throat> I can think of several, but they racked up like four or five or six other like top 15 or 20 wins. So they had shown that that was just a bad game. The other thing is why worry about the playoffs? Just just Pitt, Pitt, Pitt's, Pitt is capable enough. I think that's about a 60, I'd have to go back to my original projection. I, I did a percentage projection on all the games, but in my opinion really hasn't changed about the two teams since preseason. I'm going 65-35 Miami. I think they're like 60-40, but I'll go 65-35 at home. Uh, in that game against Pitt. So Pitt's capable of winning this game. I would not be surprised. It wouldn't even phase me. But I think Miami's going to win. Me too. It wouldn't surprise me either. But unfortunately, that would continue to push that narrative that we lose one game, there goes the locker room, there goes the confidence, there goes the recruiting, just like that. And I'm not going to feed into that. I think that things are different. I mean, when your leader is your QB for once, uh, and not your inside linebacker who isn't that good. Uh, all those type of things, I, I really think there's a different demeanor about this team. And I think they needed to get kicked in the teeth to realize who we were. Because we were riding high after kick, beating the crap out of Tallahassee. So, I mean, I understand it moving forward. And I, I will say this before. People can call me whatever they want for it. I would much rather the game go the way that it did week five than go the way that it does an ACC championship game or some in a playoff game. You know, Miami couldn't pull an Ohio State 2017 where they get there and then lose 31 nothing in a playoff game. Miami would just lose all its recruits and everybody would give up on the program if something like that happened to us because we haven't built something sustainable to just yet. Because then the narrative would be Miami finally plays a real team and they get shellacked. Which up until this point has been proven correct for God knows how long. And even some instances, if we play some average teams, we get shellacked. So this upcoming Saturday is the only game that matters. 
you know, like I said on my live yesterday, we get past that live. You know, we wait until Monday on my channel to discuss things. And thank God I don't do post games because I would have been super emotional and saying all type of crazy things. I take some time, watch some film, give us some days, and see what we do. I mean, I, I enjoy being like kind of the voice of reason to a certain extent and letting people know we just aren't there yet. And I watched the film. I saw some good things. I saw some fight, but there was just two two different level of squads that played each other. You know, we really saw what it's like to be a top three team and not be a top seven team that was pushed up there. All right, folks, I'm going to sell it here. I don't like to do this, but we got the wholesome one right here. You got to go over to his YouTube channel. That's all there is to it. So if you're watching this video, which we've got about, uh, what is it? Don't have my glasses on about 85 or 90 online, I think something in that range, but we're going to have 2,500, 3,000, whatever views on this. So everybody's got to jump on over to the wholesome ones channel. I'll pull up the banner right here. The other thing you need to do for us is subscribe right here to Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. That way, you know, when we go live, even if you support the channel, watch and so forth and so on, you don't know how much you help by also subscribing <laughs> and uh, hitting the bell for the notifications to know when we go live. And if you just want to keep this thing going and uh, catch the vision, then help us out in that way. Uh, we're launching an SEC live show Wednesday night at 8 o'clock Eastern time. We've got like eight or 10 guests lined up already. So we're going to filter in and cover the entire SEC every Wednesday night at 8 o'clock Eastern time. 